Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Godcast. My name is Father Alex. I'm the vicar of St. Matthew's Church in Burnley. I'm the host of The Godcast. I'm also the author of Our Daily Bread from Argos to the Altar, a priest story which is available in all good bookshops and online. My guest today on The Godcast is Peter Oborn. He, Peter is a political uh, journalist. He's an author and he is a broadcaster. So I do hope you enjoy the interview. If you do, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or perhaps follow me on X where you'll find me at Alex D. J. Frost. But for now, enjoy this interview with Peter O'Born. Well, I'm delighted to say that uh, joining me on the Godcast this week is Peter O'Born. Peter, how are you? I'm I'm managing. Thank you very much. Just back from uh, Jerusalem. Yeah, well, probably probably a good place to start, uh, Peter. You are a a, a man of a certain vintage. <laughs> you are, uh, you know, uh, well honed in political matters. Um, I was wondering, Peter, where in in that long line of experiences that you've had, does this what is happening in the the Holy Land and the Middle East sit with you right now? Um, I'm, uh, it's, it's very profound and, and, and terrible what is happening. Can't tell you how shocking what is going on is. And, uh, I suppose if you are a Christian, you, you are very conscious of the experience of Jesus Christ and what he taught, um, about human suffering and, uh, and how to respond to it. Um, I, uh, but what is, you know, we are now seeing uh, the slaughter of you know, so thousands upon thousands of uh, people in Gaza and now in Lebanon. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, it's been broadcast by very brave uh Palestinian journalists, uh, in Gar who many of whom have been killed, of course, well over a hundred. Um, the British government seems very easy with this, not to worry too much. Uh, in fact, supporting it, um, I would sympathise to the Conservative Party opposition, which is strongly supporting Israel throughout all of this. Um, I, I so I that that I, it, 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 it's pushed. Uh, and of course, we have what is going on in the West Bank, which I spent, spent a lot of time in the West Bank while I was there, uh, where you have the theft, state state sponsored sponsored settler terrorism, um, which again the British government harumphs about a little bit, but really doesn't. Uh, there are no consequences for the Israelis, no serious consequences. Just tell us about uh, where where you've been in recent weeks. Peter and and some of the things that you've witnessed with your own uh, eyes and ears. Well, I I, uh, I when I go to uh, uh, Jerusalem, I do stay in the Anglican Cathedral as a sort of pilgrim's house. I would really recommend if you are a, an Anglican to try and stay there. It's there's a church service every day. It's a wonderful service on on Sundays in the cathedral. It's very impressive. Uh, Bishop um, Richard Sewell, the dean, I, I think you know him, is 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 a phenomenal a phenomenal man. Uh, does a wonderful job with his wife um, Julianne. Um, but when I go there, I uh, work. I, I tend to do some work with Middle East Eye, which I write a, a political. I'm a political columnist for them, or I do reporting. Um, uh, and I went, I also have friends in across the West Bank. I, I spent some time in Nablus, I, where, where, which I know very well, um, which is a wonderful Roman city built by Vespasian in uh, 72 AD, shortly after he'd um, destroyed Jerusalem. Uh, and it's built uh, on the same site or just adjacent to the same site where the old city, the biblical city of Shechem, which was the capital of of um, Israel, wasn't it, um, for many hundreds of years. Uh, and I stay there. It's, it's a fascinating place. It was built as a Roman city and, uh, and it's got the same 
uh, road structure as, as Vespasian gave it in, in 72 AD. It's got the Roman canal running underneath the city. It's got, you can still see the Roman features. In fact, it's there, but then of course it then becomes uh, a Christian city with the uh, as the Roman Empire go, goes on uh, uh, and and then it becomes a Muslim city. Um, and all the public buildings you can they've, they've been Roman they've been <laughs> they've been then they've become uh, Byzantine then they've become Muslim. It, it's very uh, Ottoman uh, and um, another well, I don't know what you call them but Palestinian. I mean it's uh, it's under threat of course from the uh, settlement of the Israeli settlers with the Israel IDF come in a lot. Um, and you know, when I was there last year, you, every morning you wake up to a gunfight. But um, it's the neighbouring villages which I do visit, and I have friends in these villages, and they are all under attack by these militant, extremist, violent, state-sponsored settlers set on the destruction of their property and the theft of their land. Uh, are normally heavily armed and protected by the IDF. It's quite disgusting that this sort of conduct should happen, actually. It's beyond belief. Yeah, I, I was in uh, I was in the Holy Land uh, just a few years ago and a uh, Palestinian Christian who had a property in the, in the old city uh, was basically hoofed out and told that his house wasn't fit for purpose. Um, and they, of course, they would never let him back to do do the work that they said was needed. This is the kind of thing that you see, isn't it, Peter? All the time. I mean, it's, there's a place called Beta, which is a village nearby. I went up there this time, which is um, uh, where 16 unarmed men have been shot dead, or women. The latest one was a woman in uh, the last few years. They're guardians of the mountain. These, this illegal settlement is set up, backed by some. American money. Um, it's, it's illegal even under Israeli law. All settlements, remember, are completely illegal are under international law. In fact, the International Court of Justice has ordered Israel to get out of, of, uh, of the West Bank, which incorporates most of what you would think of as the Holy Land, Bethlehem, Hebron, um, uh, Sebastia, all these famous, wonderful uh, places uh, and Israel is there. It's taking them over, and it's clearly a very concerted, deliberate attempt by the settler movement, which now largely governs Israel through uh, Itamar Ben Gavir, the security minister responsible, and uh, ben Benazel Smotrich, who is the administrator for the West Bank. Um, and so you're seeing all of these famous, wonderful places, including Bethlehem. The birthplace, uh, well, uh, but, but yeah, un under attack all the time. It's just uh, staggering. Um, uh, I can't understand when, when, when the settler violence occurs, you will get a condemnation by the British Consul General. They're very concerned when somebody's murdered or something. But they, they, uh, and then they have recently started to sanction the odd settler organization. It's not nearly enough. They, they they have to sort of say to Israel, "This isn't on at all. We're going to sanction. We're, we're going to sanction. Uh, we, you know, we we can't. We Israel is still allowed to do business from the settlements, from 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 the illegally occupied settlements, which are, co are committing barbarous acts against the mm. local Palestinian population." Britain really has to say, "Look, this isn't on at all. We're going to sanction. We're not going to ban. We're banning." Uh, trade with the settlements. Um, we're going to sanction Ben Gavir, Smotrich, and anybody in the Israeli government, any, including the settlers themselves. Um, uh, but we were somehow ashamed to do that. I, I can't understand. Yeah. And, and uh, the church, uh, the Archbishop Canterbury got off to a terrible start on this. Um, he's been very, but he ha is getting better, I feel. He, he is getting more outspoken. Just unpack that a little bit, Peter. In what way do you feel he was? He got off to a terrible start. He was. Uh, he. I uh, was there in uh, Jerusalem when he uh, just after October the seventh. He turned up, uh, and there was a letter got out calling for a ceasefire, which he 
by the other churches in Jerusalem. Um, and I, and he was very slow and rather sort of to get involved with that latter. That he, he didn't come back to Britain and say that then there must be, you know, he, that he speak the language of that letter. And he, there was a statement issued where he sort of linked himself, but didn't to the, uh, to the letter, to, to this statement, very strong statement from the other church leaders uh, in, in, in Jerusalem. But more recently, I have seen, I, I get a sense that he is beginning to understand the magnitude of what is happening at the moment. Yeah, that, that's really encouraging to hear. Um, just when I was when I was talking to Richard Sewell, he, he talked about another thing he talked about, Peter, was this kind of incarceration of people without any justification. Um, have, have you seen and heard of that yourself? Well, when I was last then, on this trip, I arrived and there was, um, you could put it out, it's available, there was footage uh, taken by a private individual of, of, an, of a man coming out of a, a jail in the, in the Negev. Uh, he, he couldn't, he had to, he couldn't walk properly. He clearly didn't know the time of day. You know, he was, and, he, and one of his arms jutted out like this. It was obviously broken. Um, and so I, I, I went and I found out where he was. I went to visit him. He was in a hospital in, in, in Bethlehem. Um, and, um, his story was just dreadful. He was came from Bethlehem. He'd been um, uh, the, the, the Israelis raided his house at uh, three in the morning. You know, he had four children, a pregnant wife. They because um, oh, they trashed the house as well. They, they took him away. Basically, he was uh, beaten. I, it, um, it's my article about this is on the Middle East Eye website. If anybody wants to read it, he was beaten for nine months. He was taken from, he was given a thorough beating and then taken somewhere else. And wherever he was taken, they, they took an opportunity to beat, beat him, kick him, put it, uh, it, unbelievable stuff. But he said that the worst was when he reached the, the jail in the Negev. It was, it was worse by far than these day, the, 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 in the jail in the Negev, it was the middle of winter. The food was so disgusting he couldn't really eat it. He was, was in a cell of ten people, and they were given they were shared a litre of water a day. Uh, he lost well over half his body weight in those nine months. He got Moazas, his name. When we came into the uh, room where he, uh, the hospital room, he, he he thought that we were Israelis. He was worried. He was saying, "Don't beat me." Don't, I mean, he didn't. He, he was. He said, "My head is still in the prison." Um, now, and he also said, in the neighbouring cell, somebody had been beaten to death. Well, I, I, uh, I looked into that. It's very well documented. Those are the conditions which he was never charged with anything at all. By the way, never charged with anything at all. Mm. Um, and uh, I kind of. Um, and the human rights organisations confirm this is what's been going on. That is experience of every Palestinian. This was a West Bank Palestinian, not from Gaza. It's about, from memory, I think it was about nine or 10,000 of these uh, Palestinians in these jails. And they're, they're all, that, it's not just him. That's, that is the, that's what happens in these jails. That's what it's like now. Um, it's grotesque. It's, it's against every, it, it, what it reminds me of is Abu Ghraib. Do you remember that after the you know the American barbarism in mm. uh, in Iraq? I'd say it's worse than Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo because it's on a much larger scale. Um, it's the fate of every Palestinian, let alone you know, the, what's going on in Gaza, where they get stripped and taken away, and of course you have your hands behind your back and it grates into your wrists, and and again you get beaten and. In fact, uh, it emerged shortly after I uh, interviewed Moaz as that there was a case where Israeli soldiers, and I think it's not unusual, sodomized um, a, a prisoner. Mm. Um, this was on uh, the footage that was emerged on Israeli TV, and then it, it, it led to a national debate in Israel: should should Israeli soldiers sodomize prisoners? Uh, it wasn't. It was with a an object, and caused horrible uh, internal, uh, as you can imagine, damage. 
Uh, and generally, a lot of it was, yeah, 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 good. Breakfast TV, like the equivalent of GM TV. You know, yeah, I think they should. You know, they deserve it. I mean, that's the national narrative now. I, I, I um, uh, I, I, and the, the, this isn't just me speaking. These are formal official reports. And yeah. Stuff which is going on in national television. It's been justified. I went on my most recent trip to... Uh, Israel's this extraordinary uh, event um, on the Gaza, on the border, just on the border between Israel and uh, Gaza, at the front line, as it were. It was in a military camp, military base, and they had a settler conference. It was about the occupation, the settlement of Gaza. Um, and uh, it wasn't just that you had the settler, senior settler people talking about, you know, just moving in, the property prices will be cheap, you know, it will be, um, and they got the plans already. Um, I said, what about the, what about the people who are already there? Well, they'll be moved out. We don't care what happens to them or. Uh, and um, because this is ethnic cleanse, this is, this is war crimes being contemplated. By the way, they're committed daily anyway in Gaza. I mean, it's but uh, um, you you uh, uh, you paint a very uh, stark and harrowing uh, image, uh, Peter. I was reading your article this morning where you you uh, you really do condemn David Lammy, you know, for denying uh, such atrocities. Um, just what do you think is the rationale or the thinking of governments, not just the British governments, but other governments? Are, are, fr from afar, it, to me, it looks like they're almost powerless. What's your your take on things? Well, you know, the British government, uh, to be fair to the Starmer uh, the government, they've been better than the Conservatives, who gave completely unequivocal support from the start until July the 4th for uh, Israel. That included trying to stop the ICC um, invest, uh, call for a uh, arrest warrants for Netanyahu and Galant in relation to their genocidal statements. Um, it included cutting off funding for UNRWA, the uh, our British funding for UNRWA, which is the only agency which is, can get food, humanitarian aid into Gaza in, in, in substantial uh, quantities and and uh, the the wretched Gabriel Cameron accepted the some sort of very flimsy evidence free doc dossier from Israel making uh, making out that there was um, uh, Hamas uh, involvement in Amra on October the seventh. Um, then uh, there was the issue of the ICJ, International Court of Justice. Uh, announced it, well, South Africa made its um, um, case to the ICJ that there should be an investigation for a plausible genocide. And Cameron and Britain trashed that. They trashed the ICJ, they trashed the Israeli, uh, sorry, the South African uh, case. Uh, and David Lammy's remarks must be seen in that context because he was asked by a Tory MP Nick Timothy uh, on Monday uh, 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 to say that the, there wasn't a genocide going on. I think this is, I'm talking from memory now, but it was uh, the genocide was the wrong language to use about what's going on in Gaza. Lamy started off his answer okay. He said, so look, this is a matter for the courts and it is indeed going through the most senior court in the world, this decision. But then he said, well, you know, then he went on to redefine what genocide was in terms which would not be uh, recognised by any of the leading uh, organisations which deal with this subject, i.e. he said, you know, it's largely over a million people. And uh, um, I think he said something like, to, to, to talk about genocide in connection with Gaza, I'm talking, it's a diminish or to sort of minimise You've got you've seen the piece, piece more recently than me. Uh, it, it, what it what it means the term genocide means. Well, he he'd actually in doing that he redefined the uh, 
definition of genocide as it is generally accepted by the Genocide Convention, by the Lemkin Institute, which uh, was founded by the man who coined the term, etc. And it's left a huge ambiguity because it, it what Lamy was basically saying that it's, it, the Israelis are not committing genocide. And he's also, I think, saying that he won't accept, or Britain won't accept, the judgment of the ICJ when it and if it comes. Um, and he needs to clear this up because has Britain re, does Britain not accept the globally accepted definition of genocide in the case of Gaza? That is the sort of territory which the British Foreign Secretary, through his very clumsy uh, language, got, has got, him, got us, us into, because he's our Foreign Secretary, has got Britain into. And, and Peter, I want to ask you, I'm just mindful of, of time, what what do you think um, the end game is for Netanyahu? Firstly, in something like the Gaza Strip, it, it, from again from afar, um, it looks like that it's just been flattened effectively. And uh, what happens after that? You know, what do you think will happen after that? And actually, in the wider uh, conflict in the Middle East, where where is his end game? Where where does he stop? Well, you've got to distinguish between what Netanyahu says and and what he does. Um, and what he he has said he doesn't want to settle Gaza. Um, well, that, that's and so the Palestinians are going on living that. On the other hand, the latest sort of development is the so-called generals' plan, where they're cleansing. I mean, ethnically cleansing. I think it has to be the definition. It's against international law. It's a war crime. But they're driving the Palestinians out. They're driving them uh, south, and the ones that remain, um, are, well, they're under attack. A horrible attack, hundreds, you know, we have almost every day at the moment, it seems a hundred get killed. I mean, it is, one of the things you do see is the pictures, I've seen all the pictures, I mean, it's barbarism. And if you, uh, but looking aside, Netanyahu, uh, he's, obviously, he's now launched this campaign in Lebanon, Um and uh, he's they 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 bomb Syria a lot. Uh, they um, what are his what are his objectives? Well, one of them is to keep out of jail because if he moment he ceases to be uh, Israeli uh, prime minister, he will face a barrage of corruption charges, and there is a a problem here because he he, he only can carry on so so long as keep out of jail keep out of being held to, to account for these corruption issues by remaining uh, prime minister. The hostages, mind you, their families, a lot of them are appalled by what Netanyahu is doing. They want a deal for the host their, their hostages, um, uh, their sons and daughters, uh, and they're not going to get that while, while Israel is being as aggressive under Netanyahu as it is. And so... What is his long-term objective? Um, well, he says it's to defeat Hamas, no sign of that, to uh, eliminate Hezbollah, no sign of uh, that. Uh, the idea that one should sort out these terrible issues through for negotiations, talks, etc., isn't in his mind. And it's not just me saying this, it's the Defence Minister, Gallant, who said this, that Netanyahu doesn't want, you know, he's the main obstacle to a ceasefire. It's it's uh, very sad, uh, particularly uh, my bishop is Bishop Philip North, and he said to me, when when you go to the Holy Land, it will change you in many ways, and it has. And um, one, of, one of the ironies that I think is not lost on me, Peter, is that when, when I went to the Holy Land a couple of years ago, people were worried about me going, you know, all the, the kind of stuff in the air, the news in the air. But when I was there in, in the old city, I felt incredibly peaceful. I felt incredibly at ease. I felt incredibly spiritual. I never felt worried for my safety. I think that's an irony that, that's not lost on me, is that whilst at times it is the most fragile place in the world, when when it when it's not um, all kicking off, it really is a, a place of beauty. I'm just wondering how it affects you on a spiritual level, Peter, when you're there or, or in those same places. Bethlehem or, or Old Jerusalem. Yeah, very, well, it is very um, 
profound. I mean, going, as you say, going around the old city, I was going pray at the it's a church of the Holy Sepulchre, isn't it? In the old yeah. city, yeah. I mean, it's beautiful, it's an incredible place. I always go to where Christ was allegedly. I, mean, I think it was crucified. But you I go there, and I always pray. Uh, you know, um, because of course Christ's stories talk so directly to to what is going on. I went, I go, and, and in the West Bank, it's also safe. If you go with Palestinians, you're incredibly welcome. Um, you've got, you, they have to go to quite often. The journeys are quite laborious because you've got to go up into the hills through farm tracks to avoid checkpoints and settlers. Because, but uh, you, it, you're with, where you're in Nablus, I've taken, you know, they take, I feel that they take me to their, to their hearts. And you go to these glory, in Sebastia, for instance. Which is under attack from settlers all the time, but you you go to the place where Herod, where Herod um, ordered John uh, John's head on a John the Baptist's head on a platter, and you can go to the old church where he his body was in the catacomb for about four years. I, I, you can go down into the steps into that place, and you can stand where. John, John the Baptist's wife, it's, it, but things like that are just, I, I'll tell you, actually, it's quite a, I did this about, I had a terrible knee issue and I, I could hardly walk. And I walked, I staggered down there uh, to where John had been, he had been for 400 years after he had been uh, murdered by uh, Herod. And I, I, I prayed, of course. But I didn't pray for myself, even though I could hardly walk. Because I thought that's out of order, and I, 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 I like to pray for the Palestinians as, as I love, but I think it's I don't pray. But I walked out of there, and my leg was it didn't hurt at all. I, the, the remainder of my time, it was fantastic. You know, my leg was in rip, rip roaring shape. Wow. Even walking up to these huge Ottoman steps, yeah. and I do I I don't know, but I, I did feel I do feel that John the Baptist actually may have had a say in all of that. Be nice to think so, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. And, and a, a final question, Peter. Do Do you think Do you think the Middle East is beyond peace? You know, is peace possible? It depends. It needs the. I'm afraid that Israel is out of control, and um, it needs the Britain. Above all, it needs America to stop this. Uh, and it could do. It's what one real thing really. I have to tell you, this, in 1982, when Britain, when when Israel in, in, invaded Lebanon, terrible war crimes. Though they're not nearly nothing like the scale of what's going on now. Maggie Thatcher uh, r rang up Begin or told Begin, "Stop doing this." And so did Ronnie Reagan. Ronnie Reagan. And he said, actually, if you want any more weapons from us, you're not going to get them. Until you, until you get. And within half an hour, Begin uh, had stopped the um, the uh, uh, grotesque human rights abuses being carried out by Israel in, in, in South Lebanon. Um, now, I don't understand why. And Ma both of them were pro-Israel. Maggie was really pro-Israel. But they were also pro-human rights. Now, Starmer, uh, Sunak, let alone Joe Biden, they don't seem to have the same moral structure. I think it tells us a lot about the sort of people we are. We have become immune to barbarity and atrocities. Because, and actually when Begin, he was so up incensed that Maggie had rung him up and, give, and told him that he, he had to pull himself together and stop doing this. Uh, he, called, he called her up and he wouldn't, she wouldn't even take his call. And she called this barbarism. And why, why Western leaders today are, are, are unable, because we are the ones supplying the arms, the diplomatic protection. As I told you, David Cameron was stopping aid to UNRWA. He, won't allow, he tried to stop the ICC, and so far it hasn't happened. The ICC uh, criminal warrant out from Netanyahu and Galab. Yeah? So what's gone wrong with our leaders? It's, I think the Archbishop of the, the, the Archbishop of Canterbury is now saying some very important things. Um, the Pope Francis has been magnificent. Mm. 
I'm going to tell you something about him. It's just very moving. In, in, there's a Catholic church. I think it's called the Church of the Holy Family because Jesus, Mary, and Joseph went through Gaza on their way to Egypt. There's a church. I've been there. And there's a Catholic priest. I, I, I knew the previous one, not the guy. He's been recently been replaced. Pope Francis rings up a Catholic priest in Gaza every night to, know, to learn what's going on. I um, I think that's... And he's made some very important statements. That's, I think, leadership. Thank you. Yeah, I think so. And, and, and um, I, I, I've published my own... Well, uh, Harper Collins, uh, Collins have published my book, but but in there, Peter, I raised some of the things you've said. There is what has happened to our our country, where we've become we've become almost heartless, haven't we? And and we are we seem immune as a nation to uh, genocide and horrors. Um, I'm not saying people don't care, but there seems to be a lack of care, and and um, I don't know if that's one we can solve, but um, I do hope people have been. Well, I don't think enjoy is the right word, but I hope people have found this conversation uh, informative and um, useful. And um, uh, I appreciate you going out there, Peter, because people need to hear uh, stories from the ground. And I think um, stories are a profound way of changing society. So I thank you very much for doing that. And I thank you for coming on the Godcast. Of course, real pleasure. Thank you very much for having me.